If you've ever spent any time in front of a TV, you've probably seen something like this. A meteorologist discussing the weather forecast for your area for the day or weekend. Will it be sunny? Will it snow? Rain? Your friendly neighborhood meteorologist will have those answers for you. But do you know how any of these things happen? If you've ever had to run through the rain to catch your bus, if you've ever made a snowman, if you've ever hopped in a puddle even though your mom told you not to, you are part of the water cycle. To begin, you should know that water, like this puddle here, is made up of millions of water molecules. Each molecule is made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. You can call this H2O. As you probably know, H2O can be found in many different places. An ocean, a river, as snow on top of a mountain, or in a pond. Here we have H2O as part of an ocean. The sun is shining and it is a beautiful day for some evaporation. Evaporation occurs when the sun heats up the water and transforms it into steam. This steam can be a product of transpiration, which is when plants breathe out the water that they are holding in their veins. These water molecules are then carried up high into the sky by air currents. Next comes condensation. Because the air gets colder and colder up high in the atmosphere, the water molecules turn back into liquid in the form of clouds. These clouds hang out for a while, typically moving across the sky because of air currents. Now we have precipitation. When the molecules have condensed so much that the air cannot hold them in the form of clouds, they fall. Depending on the temperature of the air, the molecules can fall as rain, sleet, hail, or snow. Sometimes this precipitation is accompanied by thunder and lightning in the form of the thunderstorm. Lightning occurs when small pieces of ice bump into each other and create a charge. When enough of these collisions happen, the positive charges move to the top of the cloud and the negative charges move to the bottom. Because opposite charges attract each other, the negative charges at the bottom of the cloud attract the positive charges of whatever is beneath it. Charges reaching from the cloud and from the ground meet and form lightning in between. Regardless of whether or not the precipitation comes with lightning, the water molecules can then continue the cycle by joining or creating a body of water or by being absorbed by a plant. So how does your friendly neighborhood meteorologist know that it will rain this weekend? They have access to information taken from a Doppler radar. This radar can give scientists an idea of wind direction and speed and precipitation density so that we can know if there will be a thunderstorm or a bright sunny day.